read from uh, John chapter 11. John chapter 11 in the New Testament. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister uh, Martha. It was that Mary which uh, anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still, or stayed two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that he said to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of late uh, sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither or there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man work in the day, he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent ye may believe, nevertheless let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, uh, unto his fellow disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. Then when Jesus came, he found that he had been lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh or near unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, he will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, My brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? This is what God wants for each and every one of us, that we would be saved, that we would come to be a child of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, when we're born into this world, we're born as sinners. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God be justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now you and I have a great need of salvation, of forgiveness for our sins. The only way we can receive forgiveness is through the precious shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which he shed for us upon the cross of Calvary. You see, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried, but praise God, the third day he rose again according to to the scriptures. She said, this is verse 27 of John 11, she said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master is come, and calleth for thee. As soon as she heard that, she rose quickly, and came unto him, now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then, were, uh, which were with her in the house, and comforted her when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. 
Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. That's the shortest verse in the whole of the Bible. Jesus wept. We see the compassion of the Lord Jesus Christ. How he loved us so much to give himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. How do you have that everlasting life? It can only come through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. For he hath been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said not I unto thee, uh, Said I not unto thee, That if thou wouldest believe, Thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot, with great clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him, and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is an expedient. It is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, and not for that nation only but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. And from that day forth yeah. they took counsel together yeah, up. for to put him to death. Up. Jesus therefore walked no more openly no. among the Jews, but went thence yeah. unto yeah. a yeah. country near to the wilderness into a city oh. called Ephraim. And there continued yeah. with yeah. his yeah. disciples. Yeah. And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand, that means near yeah. at hand, and many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then sought they for Jesus and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple, What think ye that he will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he were, he should show it that they might take him. John chapter 12. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment, of speaking out very costly and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odour of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, which was not, uh, why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence 
and give it to the poor. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and had the bag and bear what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my burying has she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. Much people of the Jews, therefore, knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, because that by reason of him many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon. As it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh sitting on an ass's colt. These things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things under him. The people therefore that was with him when he called Lazarus out of his grave and raised him from the dead bear record. For this cause the people also met him, for that they heard that he had done this miracle. Pharisees therefore said among themselves, Perceive ye how ye prevail nothing? Behold, the world is gone after him. And there were certain Greeks among them that uh, came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which uh, was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honour. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it, and will glorify it again. The people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world, meaning the devil, be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. The Lord Jesus Christ is seeking to draw you unto himself by means of the cross of Calvary, which he had to suffer. He had to suffer so much pain and agony upon the cross of Calvary when it was made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. This he said, signifying what death he should die. Yes, he had to be lifted up upon the cross of Calvary. Such was his love for you and for me. But God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes, you and I need to understand we are sinners in the sight of God when we're born into this world. We need forgiveness for those sins. The only way we can receive forgiveness is through the precious shed blood of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, which he shed for us freely upon the cross of Calvary, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. Verse 34 of uh, John chapter 12. The people answered him, We have heard out of the Lord that Christ abided forever. And how sayest thou, the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? 
Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither or where he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. You see, the Jews should have known this. These miracles were done for the benefit mainly of the Jews, that they would understand that this is the very Christ, God's anointed, the King of Israel, the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's the one that will rule this world with a rod of iron one day, but it's not yet. You and I need God's salvation urgently. We need to become children of God. The only way we can become children of God is being born again into God's family through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. It says here, um, I'll just repeat verse 37 of uh, John chapter 12. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. That the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord hath been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory, and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. I wanted to say, describe you. Would you be thinking that, well, if I am become a Christian, if I'm born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, people will think I'm an idiot, and you'll be an outcast. Do you really love the praise of men more than the praise of God? God is the one with whom we have to do. We have to understand that God is no respecter of persons, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have a great need of forgiveness for our sins. That forgiveness is only offered to you on the basis of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ having been crucified upon the cross, He is the only answer to our big dilemma of sin. We need forgiveness for those sins. And that forgiveness is only offered through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a man without blemish and without spot, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sin. What do you need to do? You need to come in repentance toward God. That is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner. Be honest before the God of heaven. We can't pull the wool over God's eyes. We can't hide anything from God. All things are open and naked under the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Even the things that we do, that night, that dodgy site you're clicking on, or whatever it might be, on the internet, watching those dodgy movies, whatever they are, God knows exactly what's in our heart. And those things are bad. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Above all things, who can know it? I, the Lord, try the hearts, he says. So God knows what's in our heart. We need to understand. We have a wicked heart before the Lord, but there is good news. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Just acknowledge before God that you are a sinner, and then put your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 44 of John chapter 12, Jesus cried and said, he that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, 
I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words, hath one that judgeth him the word that I have spoken. The same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. You see, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came down from heaven at the request of his Father in heaven. The Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. But is he your Saviour? You need to make him yours personally. Yes, he's available for the whole world to be saved, but the whole world will not be saved because they will not come before God and admit before him, yes, I realise I'm a sinner. Just be honest before God. Repentance toward God. Change your mind. Agree with God that you are a sinner. And then put your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see, time is running out. We need to understand the great need we have of eternal salvation. That salvation is absolutely eternal so that if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you can never ever lose your salvation. You will be a child of God for all eternity. No one can ever lose their salvation. I wonder, are you concerned about your soul? Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you become a child of God? You need to become a child of God through faith alone in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Well, I hope, I, I hope I've made it plain that we're sinners in the sight of God. We need forgiveness for those sins. The only way we can receive forgiveness is through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a lamb without blemish and without spot, he was crucified for us upon the cross. Yes, he was crucified. He shed his precious blood that day when he was crucified for the cleansing of our sin. But that's not automatic. We need to make him our own saviour in a personal way. Otherwise, we'll never, ever be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Why not do it now before it's forever and eternally too late? At the moment of death, it's either heaven or hell. I wonder, what will it be for you? It's all determined by what you do with our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you, and thanks for listening. This here is actually, I've just been preaching outside, it's supposed to be the biggest um, shopping centre in either Darwin or the Northern Territory, I'm not sure. It's called Cassarina Cas Arena Square, I think at least, I think that's what it's called, that's what it says up there. Uh, yeah, Cassarina Square, sorry if I'm saying it wrong you folks in Darwin. But anyway, I hope you've understood the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's so essential that you get right with God as a result of repentance toward God, as I keep on saying. Basically, change your mind. Agree with God that you are a sinner, and then put your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Well, it's almost time for us to... Well, a few hours time, we've got to uh, fly back. Queensland, but it's been great here in Darwin. Really enjoyed the time here. But um, hopefully, I'll get into the city uh, tonight and do a bit more preaching, maybe in some of you know the nightlife sort of area. That's what I'm hoping to do anyway. Anyway, God bless. Thanks for looking at this. And um, you need salvation. You need forgiveness for your sins through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sin. God bless you and thanks for listening.